I'm here to tell you today that if you turn your back on the world and everything it stands for, you're going to make it. I'm here to say that if you walk right, talk right, do right, according to the written word, the living word of God, you're going to make it. Read a little further there, my brother. Wherefore, Wherefore, the rather breath, the rather brethren, brethren, give diligence to make your calling, your calling, and election sure, sure. Yes, we done. For if ye do these things, for if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. You shall never fall. I, I hear to tell you today what the word of God said is true. If you do these things, you will never fall. Go with me to Jeremiah. Chapter 26, my brother. Jeremiah chapter 26 and verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 26 and verse 1. In the beginning. Yes, read on. Jeremiah 26. Jeremiah chapter 26 and verse 1. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim. The son of Josiah. Yes. King of Judah. Yes. Came this word. Yes. From the Lord. From the Lord. Saying. Saying. Thus saith the Lord. It was God talking. He said thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Yes. Stand in the court of the Lord's house. Yes. That's where we're standing. And we're calling upon the Lord. Read on. And speak unto all the cities of Judah. And speak unto all the cities of Judah. Read on. Which came to worship. Yes. In the Lord's house. Yes. All the words that I command thee to speak. Not unto some. Them. What does it say? All the words that I command thee. Not some. Read it again. All the words. All that, the words that I command thee. Not some. You see, you can't come and pick and choose what you want to preach. You've got to preach it all. You've got to preach everything. You've got to preach it as it's been written. You may not understand it all, but you've got to preach it. And God said, all the words that I, what? All the words that I command thee. Yes, read on. To speak unto them. To speak unto them. Diminish not a word. What? Diminish not a word. I want you to read that again. Diminish. Diminish means don't make light of it. Don't take something away. Don't preach only what you want to preach. Preach it on. It said diminish not. Diminish not a word. Yes, read on. If so be. They will hearken. If so be that they will hearken. That means somehow they heard it, they believed it, and they lived by it. Read on. And turn. And turn. Every man. Every man. From his evil way. From what? From his evil way. That's what the scripture tells you to do. Huh? Read on. That I may repent me. That I may repent me. Of the evil. Of the evil. Which I purpose to do. Which I purpose to do. You better believe it. You better believe it. You think that God is just a God of love. Many of you have forgotten who God is. Many of you have forgotten. Who do you think it was that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah? It was God. Who do you think it was that sent the, 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 the water to destroy all living things on the earth the first time? It was God. So we like to say that God is a God of love. I'm, I'm here to remind you today. He's not just a God of love. The scripture said the wrath of God is visited from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth of God. In unrighteousness. Did you know that when God gets mad, He will kill you? He'll put you in the grave. It's His right to do so. The scripture said in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, 
But in, in, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, it said, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. It was God that made us. And the scripture said that when he made us, that the whole duty of man is to worship God. God did not make you to live unto yourself. God did not make man to live as he desires to live. God did not make man to live unto himself in sin and shame. God never made you to fornicate and to commit adultery and to live like dogs in the world. He never made you for that purpose. And whoremongers and all these sins that men commit, God never made us for that purpose. Even hell was not made for man. The scripture said that hell was made for the devil and his angels. It was not made for man. But you're going to end up there if you don't make right with God. You're going to go there if you don't make right by God. That's where you're going to end up in the lake of fire if you don't make right by God. Amen. Got to make right. Read on, my brother. If so be they if, will hearken. If so be they will hearken. And turn. And turn. Every man from his evil way. Every man from his evil way. That I may repent me. That I may repent me. Of the evil. Of the evil. Which I propose. Which I pur purpose. To do, to do unto them, unto them, because of the evil, because of what? Because of the evil, yes, of their doings, of their doings. Read on, and thou shalt say unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord, if ye will not hearken, if ye will not hearken, to if me, you won't make right. If you won't do right, if you won't walk right, listen now, heaven is real, heaven is real, life is real, death is real. Listen now, as much alive as you are right now, if you die and go to hell, you'll be just as aware down there. You'll be like the rich man who looked up in torment. He had consciousness. He was aware. He was awake. He was dead in this world, but he was alive in the next. He was dead in this world, but he was awake in the next. He was awake enough. He was awake enough to be able to feel torment. He was awake enough. To look up and see Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. He was awake enough to ask questions and, and say, Can you send Lazarus down here to dip his finger in some water and cool my tongue? He was awake enough to have a conversation with Abraham. And yet it was too late for him. He was awake enough to remember his brothers that he had left behind. He was awake enough to say, listen, send Lazarus back there to warn them that they don't come down here to this place called hell. He was awake enough to know it. He was awake enough to see and hear and feel. He was awake enough. Many of you like to believe that when you die, you're dead. You burn that body, you cast the ashes out in the ocean. You, you don't understand life, nor do you understand death. When a man dies, it's from one consciousness to another. When a man passes from this world, he goes from one state of consciousness to another state of consciousness. He may no, no longer be in the physical body, but he is still aware. He is aware of the sins that he has committed. The scripture said that after death, then there's nothing left but a fearful waiting for the judgment. 
When a man dies and he goes to hell and he's down there waiting, he's awake and aware. He knows that he has not lived right. It's an awful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Why would a man wait until he gets to hell when it's too late to make a change? Make that change today. Why would you wait until you die and when you get to hell there's nothing that you can do about it? Make that change today. Why would you wait until you get to hell when the, the, you suddenly realize that everything you ever heard about God is true? Everything you ever heard about hell is true. Why wait when you can get right today? The scripture said today, now is the accepted time of salvation. Today if you shall hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the day of provocation. Amen. We're talking right now about the things of God. We're encouraging you to make right by God. To do right by God. To get right with God. Read on my young brother. And thou shalt say unto them. And thou shalt say unto them. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. If you will not hearken. If you will not hearken. To me. To me. To walk in my law. To walk in my law. That's the word of God. Unchanged. Word of God. Read on brother. Which I have set before you. Which I have set before you. To hearken. To hearken. To the words of my servant. To the words of who? My servant. That's who we are. Amen. You know I look at them. I'm a man of God. I don't mind saying it. I'm a man of God. I love to say it. I'm a man of God. Amen. I rejoice to preach this word. Feel good about my salvation. Love to preach the word. Love to talk of the word. Love to live the word. Amen. You know, Psalms 1 says, uh, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the law. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Amen. That's the thing about this. You love the word of God. You, you, you're a man of God. Amen. When you love the word, in his law doth he meditate day and night. That's where all those precious promises come from. In his law doth he meditate day and night. For he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so. But are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the, in the judgment. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. But the way of the ungodly. It shall perish. I'm a man of God. I love to say so. I love to live this life the way God said I should live it. Amen. The word of God is precious to me. I rejoice in it. Amen. Each day, each night, each morning, I rejoice in it. Read on, my young brother. To hearken to the words of my servants. To hearken to the words of my servants. The prophets. The prophets. Whom I sent unto you. Whom I sent unto you. Both rising up early yes. and sending them. Yes. But ye have not hearkened. You have not hearkened, God said. Read on. Then will I make this house like Shiloh. Then will I make this house like Shiloh. And will make this city a curse. And make this city a curse. To all the nations of the earth. My God. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Amen. It's a fearful thing. When God turns his mind against you and decides he's going to destroy you, it's a fearful thing. Huh? You're in trouble with God. Amen. You see, God had sent the prophet Jeremiah to the people, and he was prophesying, but the people did not want to hear. In fact, they wanted to kill Jeremiah. Read a little bit more. They wanted to kill him. Why? 
because he preached the word. Jeremiah came preaching what God had told him to say. And they wanted to kill him. And they wanted to do the same thing to Paul. They wanted to kill Paul too. They didn't want to do the same thing to Stephen. They actually did do the same thing to Stephen. When Stephen had preached to them, the scripture said they took up stones and they stoned Stephen to death. Amen. They killed Stephen. Many times when God's people preach the word in its fullness, they want to kill you too. Amen. You know it's true of the wise. The word of God is true. Come on. When, when you preach this in its fullness, man's going to want to kill you. Want to take your life to shut you up. So you can't preach it anymore. Because they don't want you to preach Christ in his fullness. When I tell you the spirit of Antichrist is alive and well in the church today, it's true. Read a little more, my brother. So the priests and the prophets. So the priests and the prophets. And all the people yes. heard Jeremiah speaking. They heard Jeremiah speaking. These words. These words. In the house of the Lord. In the house of the Lord. Now it came to pass. Yes. When Jeremiah had made an end of, of speaking, speaking. Yes. All that the Lord had commanded him. All. That means he did not diminish a word. All that the Lord had commanded him. Read on. To speak. Yes. And to all the people. Yes. That the priests and prophets. Yes. And. All the people yes. took him, took him, saying, "Thou shalt surely die." Thou shalt surely die. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill Jeremiah because he had preached the word. They wanted to kill him because he had preached the word. Now read a little more. Why hast thou prophesied? Why? They wanted to know why he spoke for God. If you're not going to speak for God, who are you going to speak for? They wanted to know why he had prophesied. They were no longer in touch with God, so they didn't believe what he had prophesied. Read on, brother. Why hast thou prophesied? Why hast thou prophesied? In the name of the Lord. My God. Read on. Saying, this house shall be like Shiloh. Yes. And this city shall be desolate. Yes. Without an inhabitant. Without any inhabitants. Read on. And all the people were gathered against Jeremiah. Yes. In the house of the Lord. In the house of the Lord. They wanted to kill him. Why? He told them what God said. That's all Jeremiah had done. I mean, he wasn't false. He was true. And you see, what you need to remember is, here's one man standing and preaching Christ, preaching God. There's a whole congregation of priests and prophets and people who are going against him. And you wonder why it is in the world today you can go into a church that is so full, so packed with people. And you ask yourself a simple question. Are they going to heaven or are they going to hell? The truth is, broad is the road to destruction. And many there be which go in there at. But narrow is the way which leadeth to eternal life. And very few there be that find it. Jeremiah was standing by himself. He was like Daniel. He was like Paul. When Paul said, only Luke is with me. He was like the prophets and priests of old that knew Christ, knew God. And stood alone. Because no one else would come with them. Amen. Amen. And they took Jeremiah aside. And they were going to kill him. Why? He had preached what God 
had told him to preach. And if you preach today what is written in the word of God, they're going to hate you for it. The scripture said, marvel not that the world hates you. It hated me first. They're going to hate you for it. If you stand by the word of God and preach it in its fullness, they're going to hate you for it. But you've got to understand something. Amen. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen. When Jesus comes. We sing a song, when Jesus lived, Jesus lived, yes, he lived for me. When Jesus died, Jesus died, yes, he died for me. When Jesus rose, Jesus rose, yes, he rose for me. When Jesus comes, Jesus comes, he will come for me. Oh, when Jesus comes, Jesus comes, he will come for me. The truth is, the truth is, that you've got to dare to be a Daniel. You've got to dare to stand alone. The truth is, you've got to be like Jeremiah. The truth is you've got to be like Daniel. The truth is you've got to be like Paul. The truth is you've got to be like John. You've got to be like the apostles of old, the prophets of old that stood and withstood and would not back down and would rather die than give up Jesus Christ. Would rather die than denounce the word of God. The scripture said that God cannot deny himself. And when you hear people denying the word of God, God is not in them. Because God cannot deny himself. When you hear people going against the scriptures and speaking and denying what is written, you know God is not in them because God cannot deny himself. When you hear people going against the word and saying that's not what it means and God didn't mean that and, you know, turning the word of God inside out and saying, well, uh, the Catholics added that and uh, one Tobias corrupted the word and this was corrupted by this one and the Catholics had it for six days and they did this with it. You know God is not in them because God cannot deny himself. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Not some, but all. When Jesus said, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, but to fulfill, he was right. He was saying, I didn't come to destroy the Old Testament, I came to fulfill it. The New Testament is the fulfillment of the Old. If the Old Testament is scripture, then the New Testament is also scripture. It stands to reason that if you have reason, come, let us reason together, saith the Lord, if you can reason. If you know how to reason, reason according to the word of God. If the Old Testament is scripture, then the New Testament is more scripture. Because the Old Testament was the written word. The scripture said all of them in the Old Testament, they died not having received the promise. Imagine you were Moses and Jeremiah and all and Isaiah and all the men of old. And you pointed to Jesus Christ. Yet the scripture said that you died not having received the promise. Meaning that all the Old Testament prophets died. But not one of them received the promise. Come on, brother. It was not yet made known. The church was not yet formed. Christ had not yet come. The church was not yet formed. And so when they died, they died believing. But not having yet received the truth. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 52, it talks about Jesus Christ rising from the dead. It said that after he arose, all those saints uh, that, that slept arose. Meaning, those prophets of the Old Testament that had died not having received the promise. All those that had died up until the point where Christ rose from the dead. But all were in the grave and not yet risen. But after Christ rose from the dead. The scripture says that all those saints that slept. Imagine, you are one of those that died. And they put your body in the ground. Amen. You die. They buried you. Amen. At the time 
Amen. The scripture says that when a man died, he did not go to paradise. Amen. Listen, when Jesus said to the thief on the cross today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. That was new. No one had gone there yet. It wasn't time yet. That door had not yet been opened. All those that had died before then were still prisoners of death. Christ had to come to set them free. We sing a song, if you want pardon, and if you want peace, yes, if you want pardon, bow down at Jesus' feet. You've got to come under the word. You can't rise above it and pretend you know more than what's written in it. You've got to obey it. You can't go outside of it. You can't say I know more than what's written here and want to live a bigger life. You've got to come under it. You can't add to it. You can't take away from it. Some songs we sing are simple, but they mean it. Rooted and grounded in the word of the Lord. Rooted and grounded in his holy word. And if you want to get to heaven, you must be rooted and grounded, rooted and grounded in his holy word, rooted and grounded in the name of the Lord, rooted and grounded in his holy word. And if you want to get to heaven, you must be rooted and grounded. Rooted and grounded in his holy word. You've got to stay in the word. Can't go outside it. Can't listen to some man philosophizing about it. Where he wants to run circles around what God said. Sometimes you see them saying, listen, God will give you an express command. A man will change it. By the time they're done, they've, they've justified everything they've done. Huh? Can't listen to man. And the scripture said, I'd rather obey God than man. Amen? Come on, brother. I love that saying. Man has a beginning. And man has an ending. But God has no beginning. And God has no ending. And I'll tell you this. God will have the last word. Listen now. Whether you like it or not. Whether you appreciate it or not. Whether you believe it or not. Whether you want to go by it or not. Whether you want to live by it or not. It's up to you. But God will have the, the final word. It's God that's going to determine where you go. I want you to go with Psalms 82. I'm finishing up now. Psalms 82. And verse 5. Psalms 82 and verse 5. Read that for me, brother. They know not. They know not. Neither will they understand. Come on now, now, now. I didn't say it. God did. Otherwise, you read that this morning. Amen. When you read it, I said wonderful scripture. They know not. They know not. Yes. Neither will they understand. Neither will they understand. That's the wicked for you. The scripture said the wicked will not understand. Amen. They don't know. They don't understand. Huh? Listen to what it said about the world. Read on. They walk on in darkness. They walk on in darkness. They're blind. Yes, the blind leading the blind. Yes. Both falling into a ditch. Read on. All the foundations of the earth. All. Oh, not some. You think this world has somewhere to go. It has one place to go. It's going to melt with a fervent heat. It's going to burn up. Everything you see is going to burn up. Amen. So you think you've got plans. It's going to burn up. This world is finished, my friend. 
Amen. It's a matter of time. Amen. Read on. All the what? All the foundations. All the foundations. Of the earth. Of the earth. Are out of course. Are out of course. It's finished. Come on, brother. It's finished. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. The world is finished. It's done. It's over. It's just a matter of time before God finishes it up. And the word of God is fulfilled Amen. in its fullness. Finish it for me, my brother. All, All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Are out of course. Yes. I've said. I've you, said. You are God. I've said you are God. You know why I said that? Because we're made in the image and likeness of God. Amen. There's something. Listen. A man... Man that is in honor and understanding that not is like the beast that perishes. We're made in the image and likeness of God. Read on. Finish up. You are God. You are God. And all of you are children of the Most High. Our children of the Most High. But you shall die like men. You shall die like men. And fall like one of the princes. My God. Arise, O God. Arise, O God. Judge the earth. Judge the earth. For thou shalt inherit all nations. Yes. Finish up now. Go to Revelation chapter 20 and verse 11. We're going to finish up now. Amen. A young man, I once heard a, a song. A young man was singing on a bus on my way in Jamaica. And I was on that bus and I heard... Uh, Heard a, I was on my way home from from a, a night service and I heard a, a young man singing a song. It went, I want to go to heaven and rest. I want to go to heaven and rest. I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven and rest. That's where we go. Amen. That's where we go. Amen. Read that for me. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 11. Let's finish up. And I saw. And I saw. A great white throne. A great white throne. And him that sat on it. And him that sat on it. From whose face. From whose face. The earth. Yes. And the heaven. Yes. Fled away. Yes. And there was found no place there for them. There was found no place for them. The, the world is finished. It's just a matter of time. Read on. And I saw the dead. I saw the dead. Small and great. That's all those that didn't make it in the first resurrection. You got to hear this now. Without the Spirit of God, it is impossible to please God. If you don't get filled with the Holy Ghost, you're in trouble with God anyway. Amen. Because you can't please God without it. You can't do a thing for God without it. Listen to what I just said. You, without the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, and the Spirit of God gave utterance, being filled with the Holy Ghost. You out there that don't understand what I'm talking about. Because your preachers won't preach it. Amen. That you've got to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Speaking in tongues of the Spirit of God gave utterance. He that speaking in tongues. Speaking not unto God. But unto man but unto God. When you're speaking in tongues. You're not speaking to man. You're speaking to God. That's why man said it's babbling. They don't understand it. Say why do you do it? Yet the scripture said a man that speaking in tongues speaking not unto man but unto God. Speaking in tongues as the spirit of God giveth utterance. Many of you never get it because you don't understand it. Never been preached. Don't understand what I'm talking about. And you're in trouble because of that fact. You've got to get filled. And the man says what is the filling of the Holy Ghost? Let me tell you what it is. When a man is born into this world, he is made up of three things. The spirit that is in him. The nature that is in him. That's the spirit. The body. And they talk about the soul. The soul, when God breathed in Adam, the scripture said that he became a living soul. 